If you have been watching the videos on this channel, you will notice how I always try to show and tell people how to apply to universities in Germany to come and study. So does that mean that Germany is perfect? I gotta tell you, it was perfect. Perfect. Everything, down to the last minute details. Well, not really. In fact, there are some deal breakers that I wish I knew before coming to study in Germany that would have probably made me to consider going to another country for my master's program. Lucky for you, in this video, I'm going to talk about three reasons why you should avoid coming to study in Germany. That way, you are better informed than I was when I was searching where to pursue my master's program. Let's get started. In Deutschland, Musman Deutsch Sprechen, which roughly translates to you have to speak German in Germany. Even if your master's program is taught in English, you have to learn German, particularly if you plan to work in Germany after you complete your studies. 95% of the jobs advertised online require you to be fluent in both German and in English, especially if it is a well-paying job that involves you dealing with German clients. Also, the German language may not just be required for getting employment, it may be important for daily life. Literally, the moment you land in Germany and leave the airport, English stops. Everything, and I mean almost everything, is in German. So, for example, all official letters are in German. Advertisements and road signs are in German. Even when you go to the supermarket, the products on the shelves are labeled in German. The instructions on how to cook those products are also labeled in German. Heck, even the receipt that you receive after you buy a product in a supermarket is in German. The point that I'm trying to make is that if you're not willing to learn and fully embrace a whole new language, you are better off choosing another country to go and study in. Because the stress of not being able to do simple tasks such as filling forms, asking for directions when lost, and not being able to understand cooking instructions written on the box can become overwhelming if they keep happening again and again. Studying in Germany is f difficult. What did he say? Oh. Uh, okay, I probably can't say that on this channel. Let me try that again. <laughs> Has this camera even been recording this whole time? Oh, I hope so. Oh, you. Yes, you. I see you. You've made it this far into the video. And since you're already here, kindly let me know in the comment section down below what you would like me to talk about in the next video. Also, while you're down there, kindly leave a like on the video. And if you're new to the channel and so far you are finding value from today's episode, all I ask from you is to subscribe to the channel. We have just passed 700 subs and are trying to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of this year. So yeah, kindly help us get there. That way I can keep making content that will help even more people in the future. Anyway, back to the video. Studying in Germany is super difficult, especially if you choose to go to Universität or a technical university. It's not easy to put into words for someone who has never experienced the German education system to explain to them how difficult it is but I'm going to try to, so pay attention. During the semester, there's usually a lot of content to cover for any particular unit. Some units have two one and a half hour lessons in a week, while others just have one two and a half hour lesson per week. In a semester, there are about 10 weeks of lectures, and therefore this means just before the exam period, you would have anywhere between five and 600 slides of notes to prepare with. 
but remember all this content is just for one unit and usually students have between three and five units per semester. Still remaining on the topic of exams, for universities in other countries, exams are normally structured in a 70-30 manner, meaning that in the middle of the semester, there is usually a CAT worth 30 marks and a final exam worth 70 marks. That final exam is usually done in about two hours, so that roughly translates to about 1 minute and 42 seconds per mark which allows a student more than enough time to think during an exam. In Germany, on the other hand, these guys don't mess about. First of all, there is no CAT. Only the final exam is graded out of 100%. The European Credit Transfer and Accumulation System is used and there are usually 3, 6, 9 and sometimes 12 credit units. For the 3 credit units at the end of the semester, there is usually a one hour exam worth 60 marks. For the six credit unit, there is usually a two hour exam worth 120 marks. So whether it is a three or a six credit unit, that is one mark per minute. This makes taking exams a really stressful experience because you don't really have much time to think during an exam as you are expected to have all the information on your fingertips and constantly be writing throughout the exam period. For example, if a question is worth 4 marks, you should answer it in 4 minutes and if you take longer than that, it means that you won't have enough time to answer all the questions on the exam paper. So if you wouldn't want to do exams under such pressure, once again, I would advise you to pick universities in other countries to go and study in. My last reason for you not to come to study in Germany is due to the recent changes to the cost of studying in some public universities in Germany. I'm not going to mention any particular universities because I don't want to risk being kicked out of my university before I graduate because of criticizing them. But generally, some states in Germany have given the go-ahead for universities in their states to start charging tuition fees to students from third countries. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Who exactly are those third country students, you might ask? Basically, if you're not a German citizen or a citizen of the EU or an EEA country, you are considered to be a third country student. Now that certain states have allowed charging of tuition fees, it was up to the different universities to decide whether or not to implement the new policy. And to no one's surprise, of course some of them did. For example, there's a university that's now charging up to 6,000 euro per semester as tuition fees. Mind you, a program takes a minimum of two years to complete. So let's take for example a master's in civil engineering which would take four semesters to complete. For the tuition fee alone, a student would have to pay up to 24,000 euros. Then on top of that, they will have to pay the minimum of 11,208 euros for the blocked account for the first year of study. Therefore, if a student is to complete a master's program in such a university, they would be required to part ways with a total amount of 46,416 euro. Please be aware that not all the public universities in Germany currently charge tuition fees as of the date of recording this episode, but I will not be surprised if they soon start doing so. What I am trying to say is that if the course you want to pursue in Germany is being taught in a public university that now charges tuition fees, you are better off going to study the same course in another country because you will probably end up paying considerably less in terms of the cost of studying. You can also complete your master's program in half the time. 
you won't also have to put up with the grueling and stressful examination culture of the German education system. And lastly, you won't have to deal with the stress of learning a whole new other language just to be able to survive in the new environment. And there you have it. If you have found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more insightful content. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in future videos, kindly let me know in the comment section down below. And until next time, 